Good morning, everybody. I am uh, being given instructions by my Lord and High Master on exactly how she wants to be petted. She uses her rear foot to push my hand up over her head when she wants me to scratch her head. Well, hope this day is finding everybody in uh, good spirits. And, uh, oh boy, we're going to share a coffee. How about that? Mm. So, um, last night as I was thinking about uh, the Exodus diagram, uh, I just recently rewatched uh, a, a documentary on uh, the 53 War of the Worlds Making It, and they talked a lot about uh, the models that they used, and those, uh, you know, Pegasus makes uh, the original War of the Worlds ships and even some little sort of small dioramas and they're all about the uh i think they're all around the first attack scene or well no i guess they aren't all but anyway that that's the one i saw advertised a lot but uh the uh, original models were actually made of i believe it was uh it was copper i think that's how i got that shiny metal look and of course 53 being the day of practical effects the model makers had to put everything inside the ship all the electronics all that stuff really lit up and everything and you might remember or you can go back and rewatch uh the first attack scene when they first come out of the out of the gully the uh y if you look underneath them you see the i've probably mentioned this before you see these little beams of light coming out with sparks well that was all practical effects uh the reason the, the, those things actually like the original ones in the book were supposed to be walking on legs not not actually flying or hovering and they wanted to make the but instead of have big mechanical legs since they went with that swan and cobra head look they wanted the models to uh be on these like electromagnetic rays you know uh legs that provided levitation and so they they actually were supposed to be tripods in their own way I mean, the only time you see this is when they first come out of the of the gully Unfortunately, since they were using actual pyrotechniques to give the sparks, they wound, apparently they wound up setting the, the, putting the, torching the set. It caught the set on fire. So they said, okay, we're not going to do any more of that. And the guys who built the models of the cities, uh, those were actually real places in L.A. So they did, uh, they did a lot of work for the details. That model work holds up today. And uh, well, Ray Harryhausen actually wanted to get the... Uh, contract he wanted to do it with uh he wanted to do it all with uh are you done my lord uh he wanted to do it all with uh you know stop motion he actually did a sample stop motion and the, and the aliens are going to be sort of like octopus leg things but they didn't go that way they really, were supposed to have a beak on front and uh if you got on youtube you can find the footage that he the test footage he did is pretty good but uh, he didn't get the contract to do it, and the rest is history. But uh, the model work, I think, was just fantastic. And uh, unfortunately, none of the original models survive today. There are some, uh, uh, a couple of models from the TV show, but they're just uh, fiberglass and they don't move or do anything like the originals did. And apparently, uh, the reason there's none left was they <laughs> gave the uh, shells to the Boy Scouts for a copper drive. So, at least, you know, it went to a worthwhile cause. But those things were heavy. But uh, when, it came to, when it comes to uh, plastic model kits, I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I'm kind of surprised given as popular as that movie was, that it, there weren't more kits available than were. And uh, and I, I could be wrong, but I'm not aware of any outside of the Pegasus kits. And, uh, and God bless Pegasus for, for uh, making those. But I would think that would be a... a it, the molds might be a little expensive because it, the cavities would be kind of deep, but uh, I don't think that would be a... Uh, a terribly difficult thing uh, to uh, to make. That there might have been some. There might be some resin or vac kits. I didn't look to see if Fantastic Plastic ever made that or not. Seems like it'd be pretty straightforward. Of course, there might be some rights issues involved. So 
that, that can stop a, a project in its tracks. I believe they were going to make uh, the, a movie of the TV show UFO, but uh, Jerry and Sylvia Anderson had divorced, so it got tied up in uh, litigation who had the rights. I think that's what killed that. And, you know, the I built the Bondi UFO Interceptor, and it goes together okay. It had, like a lot of the Bondi uh, kits, uh, it um, of that era, it, it, they liked a little bit of play value. It had the little launchable uh, nuclear warhead off the front. And I got it all built and I put a 148 scale pilot in it from a Century Series. And it, you know, the little thing bleep, it pops off. I'm like, yeah, who cares? I'm not going to do that. Plus, after two or three tries, I think it broke. <laughs> it's just a little plastic internal mechanism. That's one of the dangers of giving models play value is uh, they're, they're pretty delicate to play with. I think we all know what happens when you put retractable wheels and opening canopies on an airplane and a kid makes it work. He's going to play with it. He's going to do that until it breaks, which is going to happen. Um, so, uh, oh, today, today, what to do, what to do. Well... I guess it's just going to be a build day. Well, I'll say that. <clears throat> I thought about doing a day in the life video of how I do things through the day. And that way, if any of you are having trouble sleeping, it would uh, definitely uh, it'd definitely help you sleep because it would be boring. But uh, you get up in the morning. And uh, once I get permission for my daily download from my overlord, I uh, make my coffee, shoot this video, depending on how time's going, how late it is. Uh, sometimes I upload it straight from the phone with no editing <clears throat> because I accidentally gave you a navel cam. I think I should probably edit this one. And um, then uh, go and play on the computer for a little bit, have breakfast. Um, then... <laughs> If we have any honeydews, those come next and then off to the shed. And then I usually come in uh, around dinner time. And sometimes I go back to the shed, depending if I got something that I, I want to finish off or needs my attention right away. But after that, then I do most of my computer work. Unless I'm actually going to record something. If I have a, a script ready to record, then uh, the kind of reverse takes place. Uh, I uh, After lunch, I'll go in or breakfast I'll uh, uh I, I might go out to the shed and do a little tinkering and some stuff but then I go inside and spend most of the afternoon on the uh computer and it takes a while to edit everything and if I'm lucky maybe I get out to the shed and do a little bit of uh model work so as you guys know I've been doing a lot of video work lately so that's why there's been limited model progress but uh I'm hoping uh I need to email Nick uh, we, we still haven't been able to get together for another phone call he's just guy's very very busy and but he did take a lot of time to edit the script and send it back to me so I rewrote it sent it to him and I just want to get the thumbs up from him before I record but I know how busy he is if I don't hear something by the end of the week I'll probably go ahead and and, and record the audio because I think we've pretty much got everything right and of course also uh, when I have well then there's the other projects with just these regular videos and of course the Aurora, Aurora files and um putting the finishing touches on uh, another one of those. Hope you guys enjoyed the last one that just went up. And uh, that's kind of how I spend the day, keeping my sanity during the uh, current situation. Uh, the only thing really that keeps me going uh, doing this is because there's some of you guys out there who seem to be enjoying it. And as long as, as, long as it's fun, I enjoy doing it. And as long as it's fun to do and you guys are having a great time, uh, I'll keep doing them. Uh, until, uh, you know, the real world catches up with me and I have to go back to work. And there'll still be stuff getting made then. So, uh, like I say, when it's no longer fun, it'll no longer be done. But uh, right now, I'm having a blast. And fortunately, my Lord and High Master has uh, approved this operation so we can continue. Mm. Coffee. Get it while it's hot. 
Well, you guys have a great morning, and hopefully uh, we'll be getting back with you this evening. Take care. Good morning. Bye-bye. Model on.